A few months ago, I made a video about just an absolutely amazing combination of grinders to learn your personal preferences. And that is going to have to be a slower tracking conical like the Niche Zero and something like a Ligon P64 with SSP multipurpose spurs or a faster extracting flat. And the reason why I like this combination so much is because it gives you such a great contrasting combination in coffee across all roast levels and across all brewing methods. So the entire point is that you can take one coffee and you can run it under each of the grinders and you can understand what it tastes like. You can see how does a burr set and even different styles of espresso or even filter uh, affect how the end result in cup taste. And by understanding how each of these grinders work at, I would say, different extremes, it allows you to pinpoint what you personally really like. What is missing in one burst set may be found in another or vice versa. So this combination is great because you have a I would say more general purpose grinder like the Nisero that you can do pretty much everything up until lights. And then you have this grinder that can do lights to ultra lights. And you can of course use various roast levels across any of these, but I would argue that something like the Niche Zero is a really great general purpose grinder. And then you have a specialist burr set that you pull out, such as the SSP multipurpose burrs, which are high clarity for specific coffees. So this allows you to get maximum flexibility across the board of whatever you're drinking. And I think that's what makes this really, really fun and what also makes this such a nice adaptable setup. In this incredibly subjective hobby, Understanding what you like will save you a lot of dollars. But I now want to kind of shift gears and let's talk about the better version of this, the end game. All right, here we are. So here are the two grinders that I think fit the same roles as something like the niche and a specialist high clarity burr like the Sisfi Multipurpose do. This specifically is the Cafetech Monolith Flat Max with the Shuriken LM burrs. And then here is a Titus Nautilus with the 98 millimeter SSP brew burrs. Also disclaimer, it says these are my subjective opinions. Nothing in this hobby is definitive and I will say that you need to try these out yourselves but these are my opinions and I hope you enjoy listening to them. With that out of the way, let's now discuss the grinders. Many months ago I talked about just first impressions of the 98 Shuriken LM and this is why I picked this grinder as the most generalist like best grinder I've ever used because it makes every single thing that I do taste good regardless of roast level. Although I guess you did see in that Pete's Major D's video that sometimes things can be a little bit too dark for this, but I don't really think you're gonna be drinking ultra charcoal roasts like Major D's on, on a flat max with L embers. Now, the main reason why the LM to me is so amazing is that it is the most forgiving burr set I have ever used. It makes whatever you're doing taste good, taste acceptable. You can intentionally mess up your puck prep. You can intentionally do your pour over incorrectly and it will actually save you. And to me, that is why you spend thousands of dollars on a coffee grinder is to make sure that your coffee never tastes bad. The Shuriken LM in 98 mil world is the only burr set that I've ever tasted that does this so well. I feel like other 98 flats will just expose everything that you're doing incorrectly because many 98 flats are I would say clarity optimized. That's really what the 98 SSP brew are. These are actually really clear burrs. They're not so clear that they're clinical. It's very rounded, but it is quite clear. So you understand what the coffee tastes like and you understand the origin. You understand all of that, but the way the mouthfeel finishes is very low acidity and it's smooth and it's like silky in espressos like you get this really clear presentation in the center of your tongue there is a bit of lingering that occurs but it finishes in such a smooth and silky way there's no harshness at all in how coffees taste even with ultra light coffees and also what's fascinating about this is you can use those darker roast coffees is that in some of those darker roast coffees when you apply them with these faster extracting big boy flats you get that crazy bitterness with the flat max if you you can go up to i would say comfortably medium dark and you'll get shots that that bitterness is just removed at times, what you're tasting is you're tasting what the burrs are doing. You're tasting the results of reduced bitterness, reduced acidity. I'm not saying that we're removing the acidity of 
a coffee that a coffee may inherently have. I'm saying we're removing some of those acidic properties of say something like an ultra light. So when you drink an ultra light roast coffee on this, you get those notes, but then it removes a bit of that punishing acidity or punishing battery acid feel that you may get. And it makes it so that you can take all these different coffees, you can do whatever you want, you can, you can mess up, you can do anything, and it gives you results that just work. And I, I'm raving about these birds because they, they just are that good, is that I've never had a burst that they can just do anything, continue upon this forgiving aspect or flexibility of forgiveness of how great these birds are, are ratios. With the Shuriken LM, you can pull short ratio and get clarity, and you can pull long ratio and remove some of the punishing aspects of long ratio, high flow espresso. So let's talk about short ratio espresso first. And I think this goes against the rule books is pulling light roast espresso in short ratios. If you think about why you don't do that and why people say pull long is that every single note becomes way more concentrated and if you're pulling an ultra light and you're pulling short you are just going to get punched in the face with acidity and it is not going to taste good but because the shuriken lms are so forgiving they make one to one short ratio light roast espresso actually enjoyable is that you understand what the coffee tastes like. You suddenly will get a massive amount of more mouthfeel and texture. And to me, that is that silky mouthfeel. You get all of that in a one-to-one -one ratio espresso. You should not be allowed to do that. And the Shuriken LMs let you do that. And I'm just like, what the heck? Why is that allowed? And it makes it so that you just burn through a bag of coffee because you're just drinking one-to-ones all day or one-to-1.5s and all those short ratio espressos. You get such great presentation of what the coffee tastes like, but you don't get any of the punishing aspects of doing something like a short ratio espresso. If you've ever pulled a turbo one to three, one to five, even Srover one to 10, what you'll find out is that with some of these Lyros coffees, you can often make them actually over extract. And some of those Lyros coffees, they'll be really clear and they'll punch you in the face with that acidity, but then they'll also have kind of, I would say like a more bitter, uh, ashy finish because of such, a, of such high extraction profiles. This gets rid of that. It gets rid of those finishes that are considered bad, those finishes that are a mark of undialed in coffee. I really think the way that these burrs are designed are what, in my opinion, what expensive grinders should do. Make whatever you're doing always taste good. Do whatever you want, regardless of roast level. Mess up the grind size, mess up profiles. Still tastes good. And it is fascinating. And I love the Shuriken LMs in the 98 mil form so much. Now, as you've heard there, I love this burr set because I can do everything with it. Well, if it does everything so well, what is better then, right? Better is again subjective. What I want to chase in this high-end world is I want something that is different, that is distinctively different than what this is. That's why we're going to talk about 98 SSP Brew. 98 SSP Brew are the clearest burrs I have ever tasted in my entire life. They present a perfect picture of what the coffee tastes like in an incredibly sharp manner, and there's just an insane drop-off. When you drink anything from 98 Brew, you get just the most perfect presentation of that coffee or style of brew you did and then it just goes away. If I were to try to use my hands and show you, it's like a boom, here's the coffee, and then a sharp drop off. Whereas something like the Flat Max will be like, it's not as peaky, and it's kind of a nice smooth transition away. These are like a sharp drop, which is crazy to me. This makes it so that the 98 Brew are definitely a specialist burr set. In my opinion, you should only use this burr set for light roast coffees. If you use anything darker than that, it is not really gonna taste good because these burrs extract so, so fast. If you use a dark roast coffee out of it, all the properties of dark roast coffee are just instantly amplified. There is really no, I would say, lingering effect that occurs with this. The mouthfeel is just incredibly smooth when it transitions out, but there's no linger. It's just boom, here's the note, gone. And I think to me that is really fun. You just understand what the coffee tastes like. 
Uh, and that's a good and bad thing. So I'll tell you why that's great. If you're using a coffee that is really difficult to extract or you're using a coffee that has a flavor note or a origin that you absolutely love, you're going to get that in every single sip, but it's not going to linger. So that's kind of the downside. The issue with that is that if you're doing espresso, and by the way, you can indeed pull espresso with 98 brew, although you're going to be pulling faster extracting styles of shots like turbo blooms. I honestly don't really think that this is a great burr set for espresso. It's so concentrated that you get an insane presentation of the coffee. There basically really is, is no like mouthfeel or lingering or anything on your tongue. You get punched in the face with whatever the coffee tastes like and it goes away and that happens even more in espresso. So if you're pulling one to two espressos, even one to three, one, even one to five, you take a sip and it's just gone. You get the note, boom, gone. Get the note, boom, gone. And the presentation of coffee to you goes away really, really fast. It's a perfect presentation, but also your drink goes away fast. Think about how small an espresso is. And I think this burst set is much more suited for things like filter 2.0, 2.1, and pour over coffee. You, you, you kind of need more liquid in my opinion, but that's why this is really a specialist burr set is that use this for ultra light roast coffees. Don't use old coffee with this. These are incredibly transparent. These just tell you what the coffee should taste like. So any defects in the roast, you'll be able to taste. Any defects in the style of shot you pull, you messing up your pour, you doing something wrong, it's all going to be amplified. But if you do it right, everything is great. Everything gets amplified super crazily. Now, I guess one thing to note is that if you do mess up and you do taste it, th there really isn't any lingering effect in that in every sip, you will be punched in the face with whatever the coffee tastes like and your defects and it'll go away. So try to do things right with 98 SSP brew and you'll have a great time. But that's really why I pick this as a contrasting burst set to the Shuriken LMs is that it's just that if you Again, you have a burst set that works incredibly well across the board, regardless of what roast level you use, that gives you everything. And that's what I would use for 95% of my coffees. And for when I'm doing filter brews or for when I'm doing ultra lights, or I want to drink filter 2.0, 2.1, or I just want to have a really interesting espresso, I use SSP 98 brew. And that to me allows me to cover the entire spectrum. Very, very similar to why I recommend something like the niche and a high clarity burst set. And this is, in my opinion, the currently the best on market. You get a bar set that does everything incredibly well, that brings you the forgiveness and flexibility across roast levels, across brewing methods, and gives you a result that, in my opinion, is always passable and acceptable. And you get a bar set that just excels in one specific aspect, which is do ultra lights, do them incredibly well, give me high clarity, and that is what the S3 Brew are. Alternatives for each of these, because these are definitely at the higher end of the price point. Let's first talk a little bit more general purpose. I have to mention 64 millimeter cast lab suite uh, because it is kind of like this. It gives you really nice flexibility, really great acidity presentation, really great body, but it's not as good as this. Like everything in this is just a bit more turned up. And it, and you cannot, in my opinion, do like crazy low ratios and crazy long ratios like you can, like it just doesn't do as well. That makes sense. It's a burr set that's much cheaper and you can stick it in grinders that are much cheaper. But Cast Lab Suite are a great option for a nice all purpose burr set. They're great, but they just can't be pushed as far or, or in certain directions like you can with the Shuriken LM. Another one to mention that's also very similar to Cast Lab Suite is the Bentwood. The Bentwood is also an incredibly forgiving grinder burr set. The, the 63 flats in there remove a lot of acidity and just have massive, massive amounts of body texture. It at times in those long ratios can actually give you more body than the Shuriken LMs, which is like crazy to me, but it is definitely nowhere near as clear as the Shuriken LMs. So in those smaller burr sets, 64 Castle Lab Suite 
and Bentwood are, are great options. Now, something slightly smaller, which you might be able to see right there, is the uh, EG1 with the core burrs. The EG1 with the core burrs are also a great all-purpose burr set, but they're not as flexible, in my opinion, as the Shuriken LM, and the differences are going to be in some of those shorter ratios. Like, you can do a ton of different roast levels on the core burrs, and it does a fantastic job across the board, regardless of what roast level you're doing, but it's kind of the advantage of this where it's this feels much more forgiving and you can do some of those ratios. You can really push these burrs in any direction and that's really what this is gonna do that the core burrs, in my opinion, can't do. But those are kind of those three different options there. Cast Lab Suite, Bentwood, and EG1 core burrs. Those are all fantastic general purpose burrs and honestly, we're really, really nitpicking between the bunch. But if you do just want a more streamlined like throw coffee in the grinder and make it taste good, Shirk and LM are, are still the king out there. Now, the closest, in my opinion, to the SSP brew are going to have to be the 64 millimeter unimodal version one. So unimodal version one are incredibly, incredibly clear. And they're also equally as, I would say, as unforgiving as these, but there is a lingering mouthfeel. So the difference is, is that I would say those are quote, quote unquote, very sterile burrs, same thing like these, but those have a lasting mouthfeel. And if you do something wrong, you have that lasting mouthfeel all throughout the cup and it's not very enjoyable. With this, if you mess up, it just goes away. And of course, this is still just a bit clearer than 64 Unimodal version one, even at the most heat dialed in on those burrs, at least in my opinion. But uh, those will be the alternatives that I would recommend. Otherwise, these two are just still the best. That's why I say they're the best in my opinion. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. If you do want to spend the money, this is that contrasting setup that I would pick. And in the future, I do want to talk a bit more about using big flats for dark roast coffees. There is this massive misconception, in my opinion, that you cannot use these grinders for dark roast. We'll discuss that in the future. There are a lot more videos uh, that I want to make. I've just been really busy, but that's all I wanted to show up today. Thank you for spending the time to watch the video. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you around.